here, man. Like that's that's what really... four square side event, and that would go hard. We we've had quite a few. It used to be the thing, but I feel like if you don't got Mikey at the tournament, it, it's hard to like get people. You need like Nick Yingling or something. Anyway, yeah. we're moving on to the next one. Looks like we got Egas versus Yandomo. And Igaz versus Andomo here in what has really become a staple of, of Smash Ultimate at tournaments like this. It's the Aegis and the Rob of these two characters just going at it. But obviously, Mythra especially, right, can just really run down the pace of playing neutral. But Rob just deceptively good oh. boxing tools with that down tilt. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, nothing like the good old classic back against the ropes. <laughs> the ropes being the gyro. And then just eating chunks upon chunks of damage. That's amazing. And then this is another new state that we have coming up here. Egaz, a player from Tennessee, Zandomo, splitting time between California and I believe Ohio. So just a whole bunch of geography. And Rob's gonna make you try and see a little bit more by sending you up into the outer space. Okay. What is the answer gonna be here? I like the back throw that we're seeing come out. Wow, okay, nice little reset, right? And just go for grab into a grab, enough delay between the two that you're able to get to. But at this point, whoa, where you going, buddy? Come back! And Zendomo as well, I want to mention, you know, yet another PR player here. Uh, n number eight on the uh, quarter three 2023 Ohio PR, which was the last listed one. And unsure if 2024 is, or 2020 quarter four is out just yet. But showing you why here, right, with an early lead, just finding a way to move around and keep up with the speed that Aegis brings to the table, which is not something we really see a lot of characters or players be able to do, and it's something that Rob traditionally doesn't have the easiest time with. Yeah, I mean, really struggling, I think, right now to get off my edge, but manages to find one right there, and it's looking a little bit rough, I'm not gonna lie, 177% and still attacking on extra damage, goes for the down tilt frame 3 option, puts dual down air into up air, and that's almost enough to KO, that's a very tricky move to know how to DI, but he guys manages to hang on. It's that late meta ultimate, right? Recognizing here, Rob doesn't have the best out of shield option. And Footstool there just sets up for so much pressure. This character's so good at juggling. Able to frame trap you with the gyro and push you just the slightest bit too far away. I love edge guards like that, right? Sometimes it takes a hammer and sometimes it just takes the scalpel. Oh man, yeah. And this 179% and up smash finally going to connect. Took way too long though. I mean, we're gonna see if Ega is able to bring this one back. This is a great start here. Tries to get a couple of hits there with that string. And there we go again. A nice little air dodge. Not able to get it framed tight enough. It seems. Oh, and that's one of the things I think with Aegis that people like often forget about is this character can do so much damage, but really is a character that wants to put you in a vortex like Fox off a couple hits into a frame trap into another couple hits rather than just finding super long two strings. And, and even though Rob is big, and gets comboed easily, it's still something that if you're aware of what those routes are, you can find ways out of them pretty consistently. Yeah, we're seeing right here, like, now we have the, oh, swap right back to Mithra here. Don't get confused by the colors. That is indeed Mithra. Interesting up smash choice there. I would have thought maybe the down smash is to cover more tech options, but instead went for the Hail Mary play, and now that stock is gonna drip away. A flambo, all it takes is pushing you to edge once, and that pirate down there could easily seal, seal things out, so, this one is not locked in for Zandomo yet. Yeah, not at all. Especially, you get a couple more hits here, you know, another 30 to 40 some odd percent with this Mithra. Swap over to Pyro, go for down or up smash, that's just the game. You know, like, it, it really can't be that simple. But this up throw is going to be enough. The pile driver off of the top platform to get that added extra height is going to make abundantly sure that Pyro Mithra is not coming back. And one of the things I'm really interested to see here is, do we actually see the... Aegis game two from you guys because this is a Palutena and and Aegis co-main, I believe, at least according to the data that is available. So it's gonna be an interesting choice to see because both those characters have some really good tools to combo Robin now sitting here waiting on the character select screen and, and is gonna make that switch. So something completely different. Zandomo Felt like, you know, it felt like the Aegis was catching up at the end end of game one, but just gonna offer something completely different here in game two instead. Okay, let's see how this one's able to rock out here as, I mean, so far it's looking like the Palu's already started off pretty hot. It's like, you know, the momentum was able to swing pretty early on here, but how much can you get? That neutral air, that washing machine, so good at catching people, especially big ones like Rob. 
can just kind of throw that one out, and eventually it's going to connect. Uh, Z Zandomo with the uh, pivot walk there to just try and get a little cheeky with it, but the whole scramble is not really resulting in too much for anybody. Instead, just a reset to neutral out of the ledge pressure situation, but once again, that blender of a neutral are going to do so much. Those up airs have not found a single mark yet for Egas. Hold on now. Nice little catch there, but manages to eat the shield from the Palu back there, and I think already we're feeling like, yeah, the switch made sense. Yeah, I, I really like the way this switch is working out, out, especially with the way Zandomo was playing. Right? Zandomo was playing very movement-based, but like, but kind of linearly. And Iga is going for a lot of these frame traps with Palutena, is forcing Ing Zandomo to lock down their movement a little bit, and really approach the game in a different and less explosive playstyle than we saw in Game 1. Wow, and I like the, the little bait there, right? We saw the up tilt, and then Egas actually did not air dodge, right? Sometimes he like the, the robs wait for the air dodge. No air dodge from Egas, but then a delayed up air anyway to say just because you didn't air dodge doesn't mean I'm not gonna go for it, and that managed to snatch that stock. Absolutely. Now the neutral air gonna come through, ooh, ooh, finding ooh. the pressure off the miss tech. You can't miss those, but great slide off the eye there, there to then find the back air. They're not yet, and still gonna pick up the sock. What a scramble catch from Zandomo. Yeah, got mixed up on the up air DI. That was like 77% when that up air connected, right? You're not trying to lose your stock that early as Palu, but it can be so ambiguous. Yeah, and especially that high too, right? Like, yeah. even if you don't get it completely wrong, but you just mess up a little bit, that might just be With all that much rage, mm -hmm. like, ugh. And now just trying to find back air, air, and that's one of the biggest tools for Palu in this matchup. Obviously it's fast, obviously it does so much, but we say it time and time again, it cannot be overstated enough. That move is invulnerable. Yeah. You cannot contest it. And the other great thing about it is that, like, you don't need it to hit somebody. Like, if it does, great. If it doesn't, like we saw in that last sequence not too long ago, you were able to get a falling back air into rising back air on shield, and the amount of shield damage that did is going to force your opponent to do something. And then it makes it easier for you to find a shield poke later on if you want to. But with that said, I mean, Egas getting these strings together, was able to find that stock with an up air, and now has been able to kind of do the classic nair nair, up air, up air that, you know, Palu's been known for. But is it too late? Looking for the down, the pressure, the gyro, so much getting racked on now. Ow for Zandomo, as for Egas, the clock is ticking. You cannot miss that tech! What a way to end Ooh. it! Flambo, it felt like Egas had the chance, had the opening, and was really working it, and it was just one advantage state into, okay, that's Rob advantage state, maybe I'll get a reset, you just missed the tech. The slightest of technical errors is all it's gonna take. Yeah, no, that was, uh... I was tough. I, I could tell by the fist bump that I saw at the end. Like, that was a pretty limp fist bump. I'm, I'm going to call it, man. It was, I, that didn't feel like a good game. That just felt like a get me out of here, bro. I got to go recoup my losses, man. I, oof, time to go hit the money matches. <laughs> you know what it is? That's, that's what that one felt like. But good good set overall. You know, Egas, I think, maybe kind of hoping that game one was also the Palu, I think. Because the, the Pyramithra was not able to do it. The Palu was significantly closer. Yeah, oof. Yeah. Ugh. Minimal eye contact on that one. <laughs> Get me out of here. Yeah, that was definitely, I think, yet another example I think we've seen today of just a player at the end of the day too maybe getting a little bit tilted, especially like you feel like both your characters really push them to the limit, but just neither one was able to just make that X factor for it to then end, right? You feel like Palu was working. You were really kind of dominating a lot of the pace of play in game two when you were losing on that note in game one to then lose to just a missed tech. That yeah. one's got to hurt. It's definitely like a, a moment of, darn, I wish I made it far enough to hit best mm -hmm. of five because I think that was the kind of set where like it would matter a whole lot, right? Where like each game you're inching closer to making all the proper adjustments that had that gone one more game, we might've seen a completely different set, but we won't because it wasn't best out of five. So sucks to suck, better luck next time, but great Be showing. Better luck next time indeed. We now have Ray and J-Force for what I believe Flambo is gonna mark the last set of okay. this year old little commentary block. Wave B pools is coming to a close. Wave C starting, I believe, at 4 p.m. So Sounds correct. We got one more in the chamber, and what better place is to end it off 
than when it, these players tournament lives online here in losers quarters. Okay, so we have some stakes here mm -hmm. on this next one. The player who does not manage to come out